When I was a kid, maybe 10 years old or younger, my parents went to London and they brought back one of those souvenir books you get at um, different historical sites. And they brought one back from the Tower of London where Anne Boleyn, the second wife of Henry VIII, was executed. And I was really intrigued by a painting of Anne Boleyn in this book because she had dark hair and dark eyes like me, you know, it was not like a Disney princess look at the time. And I was extremely interested that she had a necklace with the big initial B on it for her last name, Boleyn. Um, at the time, I had this very consuming fear for like that I can remember going back to first grade that someday I would have to grow up get married and change my last name and I don't know why I was consumed by that fear at such a young age I did grow up in very sexist times even worse than today's times but um, I remember my mom signing her um, credit card slips Mrs. George Brandis so not only did you not have your last name, you didn't have your first name. So I had this thing about my last name and wanting to keep it, even though I didn't grow up around people who did that, and, um, and someday I wanted a big B necklace like Anne Boleyn. So I did grow up, get married, did not change my last name, and one of the early designs I made as a jewelry designer was my big B pendant, my Anne Boleyn pendant. And, um, my artist friend Natasha Zupan even insisted on painting me as Anne Boleyn uh, in my pendant, though hopefully that's the only thing she and I will have in common. So my interest in Anne Boleyn and all the Tudors has become reflected in the names of my pets, which started out in 2006 when I adopted um, a Pekingese named Henry from the ASPCA. And he was redheaded, kind of portly, and he had this like little mouth with a peevish expression, which really, if you look at old, old you know, drawings of Henry VIII, he kind of had this like little mouth and a big fat face, and, um, and he did have red hair. So we named, we named that Pekingese Henry. In 2012, I got my first cat ever. Um, he's an exotic short hair, which like a Pekingese has a smushed face, so he resembled Henry the dog. And, um, and also is orange, so I thought, how can I continue this naming theme? And I wound up naming him Fitzroy, which means son of the king, and it was a last name given to uh, royal children who were had out of wedlock, and if you watch Game of Thrones, you know that the quote royal bastards get named standard last names like Snow and Sand to indicate their status. So that Fitzroy is one of those names, and now the cat is named Fitzroy. Fitzroy, by the way, has about 18,000 followers on Instagram who love to see him sit in a big orange bowl. So you can follow him there at Fitzroy underscore the underscore cat. And there he is, the cat in the bowl. Exotic short hair cats are really addictive. People who have one usually get another. I swear, like this is what I learned from cat Instagram. So in 2014, I got another smush face kitty. And then I had to think of another tutor name. I wanted it to go with Fitzroy, you know, so it's all very complicated. And then I realized I had been saving a name for a dog, which was Perkoy, uh, which was an actual spaniel that Anne Boleyn had, which is one of her favorite dogs. That name, Perkoy, was probably a kind of corrupted version of the French pourquoi, um, which means why, and you know, some spaniels have kind of an inquiring look of, around their, their faces. and. Um, the reason I remembered that dog name is that it's a very famous story because the dog sadly um, either died in a fall or was possibly assassinated <laughs> by someone who hated Anne Boleyn and people were so frightened of telling her about the dog she was so fearsome that they preferred to go to Henry VIII himself and say to the king, you tell her, we're too scared to. So I always loved that, that you'd go to this really... Um, you know, all-powerful monarch and say, you know, you're the more reasonable guy, like, you, you go tell her about this, about this thing. So I always had that dog name in mind, and I realized if I added an extra R, because, you know, so it's like Perkoy, and um, then it would go nice with Fitzroy, and uh, so that's who he is. He's Perkoy underscore the underscore kitten on Instagram, and, uh, but we usually call him PK. 
and uh, he's also known as Baby Cat, hashtag Baby Cat. He's very naughty, famous for his naughtiness. In 2015, after Henry the Pekingese had um, passed away from old age, we ended up getting another rescue Pekingese who came with the kind of temporary rescue group name of Cheddar. And that was really easy to transition to Edward. Edward being the only legitimate male child of Henry VIII, who briefly ruled as a child king as, as Edward VI. Um, that would have been in the 16th century. The whole time I had all these male animals, I had one female dog, the late great Gigi the dog, and of course her name doesn't fit into any of this. She was from a rescue group and she came with her original name. She was a year and a half and um, she came with her original name from her family and she knew it really well, so I didn't change it. And she wouldn't tolerate any other female animals in the house and sometimes she was not that tolerant of other women in the house either. She, she loved me, but everyone else she was kind of questionable about. So I've never had to give a tutor name to, um, to a pet, uh, a female pet. But if I do get one in the future, I'm definitely holding on to the name Bess for Elizabeth I, who was Henry and Anne Boleyn's daughter. If you want a trick to help you remember the six wives of Henry VIII, it's divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. And that gives you Catherine of Aragon, Anne Boleyn, Jane Seymour, Anne of Cleves, Catherine Howard, and Catherine Parr. If there were a lot of Catherines. They were, they were short on names back then. No, I don't know. It was just popular. <laughs> so that's your history lesson for today that comes with an overview of my pets and uh, memories of my sexist upbringing. <laughs> and uh, you can read more about what I've had to say about the Tudors and jewelry inspired by the wives of Henry VIII by clicking the links below this video. Also, please subscribe to this YouTube channel so you don't miss my next video.